Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today we have a mechanics of material type of problem. This could be an FE or a PE uh, problem. We're going to go ahead and go through both uh, handbooks for that. And uh, here's what the question says. Find the maximum normal stress on the element below. So right off the bat, looking at this, you should identify this as a more circle problem, more circle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we see our four options available to us in PSI, so U.S. units. We know we're going to use those, obviously, with the problem. Um, all right, so the first step to this is understanding where we need to dive in into the handbook. So what I did is I just searched more, M-O-H-R. Okay, so that I identified this as a more circle problem, more circle problem. So search more, and it will pop up um, what you need, really. So if you're in the F-E reference handbook we're going to be looking in version 10.2 at the time of this video that's the latest and greatest uh, we need to be looking on page 133 okay so that's the page that's going to have a lot of info about the um, Moore circle okay so if we're taking the uh, PE if we're taking the PE exam we need to be looking in the handbook we have a version 1.2 out so make sure that's the latest and greatest uh, make sure that you have that pulled and you're looking in that one. It's going to be page 29, uh, and there's a little bit of detail on page 30 that you might find useful as well, so 29 and 30 on that one. So uh, when you go there, uh, something that we need to remember is what is positive, what is negative as it correlates to an element like what we see here. Um, I'm just going to write out some general things that we should know. Compression. So any force, oops, so any force pushing into our uh, element, that is going to be a negative. And then tension is going to be positive. So I'll write that out here. Tension is going to be positive. And then the way that I like to think about um, uh, shear or, um, yeah, shear, um, the way that I, like, I like to think about shear is I like to look on this right face and I like to see how the shear is acting on that right on that right face. Force is pushing up, which leads me to believe that it is positive. So I like to think that the right face is whenever it is pointing up, it's positive. Okay? So think about it that way. So we have this arrow pointing up, we know that that's going to be positive. So step number 1 is write down what we know, okay? And so what we know is that our um, stress in the x direction, which is this baby right here, that's going to be a negative 12,000. Okay? Uh, the stress in the y direction, which is going to be this guy, is a positive. So it's in uh, tension, or it causes the element to be in tension. So this is going to be a positive value. Now the shear along the xy plane Remember, we said that the right face is pointing up. That's going to be positive. Okay, and so we have our shear right here. This is going to be a 5,000 uh, psi shear. That's what we're dealing with. So, all right. Uh, whenever we look on the manuals, we're going to find that um, we're going to find something interesting. So basically, what they draw or what they show is a Cartesian plane, and then we have uh, a spot over here and a spot over here. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but Sometimes you'll see this one on the left, you'll see it be called B in the manual, and sometimes you'll see it be called the third shear, or the third uh, stress, sorry, third stress rather. And then we see it called A on this right side, we see it called A in the handbook. This is also stress one, okay? Uh, and then basically your circle does, you know, terrible, terrible circle, but it does something like that, right? Pretend that's a perfect circle. Uh, I'm terrible at drawing circles. So, um, if we were to kind of draw where our point is, where this element is, we have. Let's go through here. Our x uh, stress is negative twelve thousand, and then we have shear on our y-axis. So keep in mind this is stress. This is shear. Uh, we're in the positive shear. This is going to be five thousand. So if we were to draw a point right there, it's that little point right there. We're going to have negative twelve thousand. 5,000. All right. So just so you know, it does something like that. And then um, you can solve for the center and then draw your little circle if you want, but no real need in this problem. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. 
And uh, we're going to go ahead and solve this guy. So we it, the, the problem asks us for the maximum normal stress, all right? So we're going to solve for the maximum, which is this guy. It's that A. It's in the positive direction. That's as far right as we can go. Uh, now, it can be negative, so keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be positive, but it's the most positive value okay, along the x-axis. So uh, uh, the, the shear or the stress for A is going to be equal to the center plus the radius, all right? And so what we need to do is we need to solve for the center and the radius. So to solve for the center, we need to go do something like this. I'm going to go ahead and merge them together. Uh, we're going to have our stress along our x-axis plus the stress along our y-axis. Uh, we're going to go ahead and split those into two. So um, I guess to kind of break this down real quick, if I can just be brief, um, we have this sort of x value, we have a y value, you find the average, and you'll find the center of them, find the center along that. So. There's that. There's just a little little brief history on how that how that goes. So, um, and then we need to add in the radius. So this right here is going to be your center. Okay. We need to add in the radius. So the radius is kind of a weird formula, but really it's just uh, Pythagorean's theorem. So just think about it that way whenever you're uh, having to solve this guy. So you take the uh, the stress along the x minus the stress along the y over 2. Uh, we need to square that, and then we need to add in the uh, shear. xy, we need to square that guy, and then we square root the whole ordeal. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right? So take the square root, and you find c. There's your radius. All right, um, and so when you solve for this guy, you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. You're going to find your stress for A is going to be equal to, let's see, negative 2,500 plus 10,735 point, we'll go ahead and bring some decimals in, 0.46. This is all PSI, by the way. I know I didn't write my units earlier. Probably should. Bad habit. But um, right, this is all PSI. All right. And so when you add those two together, we're going to find our uh, maximum. So so keep in mind, remember, we found our center, which is negative 2,500. And so that's this point right here. This right here, if we were to draw coordinates on it, it's negative 2,500, zero. All right. Because it's along the x axis. And then if you were to draw this sort of circle, about that center point, pretend that's in the center, uh, what we found was this right here. It's that A. So if, if we were to pretend that my drawing was right, this right here would be your stress uh, for A. So your maximum stress. So we took that center and we added the radius of the circle to send it over as far to the right along the x-axis as we could. And this is what we end up with. We end up with 8, 2, uh, 3, 5, 0.46 ESI. That's your answer. Now, if they asked you to draw or write the coordinates out in stress, shear, you know, Cartesian plane coordinates, whatever you want to call it, it's along the x axis. Your shear is zero. It's the total principal stress. Uh, good theory problem, by the way. It's the total principal stress, and there is no shear. So it is 100% stress. It's the maximum. All right, so 8235, this one looks like it's going to be D. All right, so I hope this video helps. Hope it clears some things up. We'll catch you next time.